Hi, good morning all. Welcome to the early bird. Is it just me? Is there a lot more goals this year? To be honest, I'm not enjoying it. I like tight games in the playoffs. I'd like to see a lot more close scores, guys. Doesn't seem like we're getting a lot of that this year. So far. Maybe I'm just nitpicking. Who knows? All right. We had some games yesterday that, uh, again, uh, just weren't close, you know? Anyway, let's go through them. Uh, let's go to uh, Florida and the Bruins. Here we go. Hull, Bruins defeat Panthers in Game 3 to take lead in East first round. As you see, guys, a 4-2 final. And uh, let's look at the numbers. Okay, the Bruins outshoot them 35 to 31. Uh, Panthers wide edge in the faceoffs yesterday, 61% to 39. Nothing on the power play for either team. Bruins 0 for 4, Panthers 0 for 2. 41 hits for the Bruins, 54 for the Panthers. 18 blocks for the Bruins, 16 for the Panthers. 11 giveaways for Boston, 14 for Florida. Shots on goal. 8-7 Florida in the first. 12-4 Boston in the second, and 19-16 Florida in the third for that 35-31 final for the game and shots. Scoring. All right, Taylor Hall from Orlov, who I thought hella, ha, had a hell of a game yesterday. Orlov makes it one to nothing. Then Coyle from Marchand to Brusk make it two to nothing after two. So one nothing after one, two nothing after two, pretty much a Boston Bruins type game. Pasternak on a beautiful feed from Orlov makes it three to nothing. Basically game over. Feligno, actually a very nice goal by Feligno, a surprise. Makes it uh, four to nothing. By then, I believe it was uh, Bobrovsky was in nets for that one. Lion was pulled after three nothing. And then Forsling uh, makes it three to one, and Reinhardt three, uh, sorry, four to one, and shorthanded, and then Sam Reinhardt four to two. But that was it for the game. I don't think the score in this game indicates just um, that it was that close. Really, I thought Boston were in command of this all night long. You give that team the lead, it's almost like it's a death sentence. The Bruins, once they had that one nothing lead, I just felt like, you know, here we go. You know, <laughs> you got to score first on the Bruins this year in the playoffs, this year especially. And uh, the Panthers, um, I, you know, I, I just don't know what to think with the Panthers, guys. I don't know. We'll have to see next game if it's a series or not. If the Panthers win next game, we have a series. I don't know. I don't know if they have what it takes to... Uh, to split the first four games. We'll see. They were the first overall team last year, though. So, you know, I always look at that. They were the top team in the league last year. So we'll see what Florida does next game. All right, let's go to Long Island. Palmieri Islanders defeat Hurricanes in game three of East first round. As you guys see, five to one. Uh, the numbers. Here we go. The Islanders, 37-31. Shots on goal. Edge there. Very close on the face us also. 51% to 49 in favor of the Hurricanes. Hurricanes 0 for 4 in the power play. The Islanders were 1 for 5. Uh, hits. The Hurricanes had 28. The Islanders had 43. The blocks... 14 for the Hurricanes, 17 for the Islanders, 11 giveaways for the Hurricanes, 21 giveaways for the Islanders. Shots on goal. First period, 15-7 Carolina. Second period, 13-9 Islanders. And you could feel the scale tipping at that point. You really could. And in the third period, 17-7 Islanders. They finally get to Ranta in this game. Let's take a look at the scoring. Okay, first period, no goals. Second period, Sezika scores from uh, Pollock and makes it one nothing Islanders. And the reply goal a few minutes later from Fast from Stahl, 1-1 shorthanded Carolina. That was it for Carolina in the game. That was it. Then with minutes remaining in the game, the big one finally happens. Palmieri scores 2-1 on the power play. 
And game's not over, but seconds later, Matt Martin gets his first of the playoffs, makes it 3-1 to one from Palmieri and Mayfield. And then Mayfield himself scores a few about a minute and a half after that. That was an empty netter. Makes it 4-1. to one. And with the goalie back in the nets, Anders Lee to top it off with Zizekas and Pollock. And it's 5-1. to one. Turns into a rout at the end, but really it wasn't. This went right to the wire. If you were to ask me who I think can come back and win their series, it's the Islanders. Because the Islanders have all that playoff experience. And that crowd, I haven't heard a crowd that loud in the playoffs yet. That's just my opinion. That crowd was loud in New York. They were loud. And you didn't hear Carolina fans in that crowd. You know, I, I, I don't know what's going on in Florida. There were so many Boston fans cheering when they'd score. So, but the Islanders are right back in the series now, especially the way they closed that game out. And Ranta was brilliant in nets. You wouldn't know looking at that, but he was brilliant in nets yesterday. And uh, we have a series, two games to one now. Uh, the Islanders are going to try and even up that next game. All right, let's go to the West. Wild defeat Stars in Game 3 take series lead in Western first round. As you guys see there, 5-1. to one. And yes, that is how this game went, <laughs> in my opinion. All right, let's look at the numbers. Wild out shoot them 25-24. Look at the face-offs. That happened all night long. That was about the only thing I felt that they dominated in the game, though, Dallas. Really. You know, it just, they, they just weren't into it, it felt like. Uh, 0 for 2 on the power play. The Wild were 1 for 4. The hits were only 17 for Dallas, 26 for uh, the Wild. I don't know. You know, it, it just felt like a lot more hits for me with the Wild in that game. Foligno was a beast yesterday. Uh, blocks, the Stars had 13. The Wild had 22. And giveaways, the Stars had 9. Look at this. The Wild only had 2. Shots on goal. First period, 9-6 to six. mini. Second period for Minnesota. Oh, no. 9-9. Nine, nine. My bad. I thought it was going to say 9-6 again. 9-9. Nine, nine. And 9-7 nine, in the third in favor of um, Dallas. That one. So very close in the shots. It didn't seem like it watching the game. It just didn't feel it. All right. Let's look at the scoring. Zuccarello makes it 1-0 at the 1645 mark. And then we go into the second. And Johansson makes it 2 to nothing from Boldy. Uh, first goal was from Hartman and Klingberg, by the way. And then we go into uh, um, a, a maybe a bit of a funk for, for Mini for a bit. And Glendening scores, makes it 2-1. to one. That was it, really. I mean, you know, if you look 11 seconds later, it was just kind of a, a quick reply. The crowd's going nuts, and a quick reply quiets the crowd down. And Feligno with the backbreaker on the power play makes it 3-1, to one, heading into the third. And uh, again, Zuccarella from Hartman and Klingberg make it 4-1. to one, And Hartman uh, scores, makes it 5-1 to one at 18-10 from Middleton. Really, it was really, the score I believe indicates how this game went. I honestly thought Minnesota was by far the better team in this game. You know, I look at this, uh, I, I can't understand this Dallas team so far, guys, because for me, they have all the tools to win the Stanley Cup. They really do. This is a big team that can play physical. I don't know what happened to them yesterday in that department. Um, they just didn't seem to get their groove going. And uh, the truth is, Ottinger played kind of lousy, which surprised me, you know. But um, look, he's entitled, you know, and that might be his first time of his career. He's had a bad playoff game, I guess you could say. I don't know. I can't remember all the scores of Calgary last year. But, you know, just uh, looking at it, looking at that game, I didn't think, uh, I didn't think Dallas was coming back. I just didn't think. I didn't think Tampa, uh, uh, sorry, not Florida. I didn't think they were coming back. Um the Islanders game was a close one, but then a ton of goals at the end. It's just very weird this year. Let's go to the nightcap. Moore, King, defeat Oilers in game three in overtime. Take Western first round lead. As you guys see, the Kings again in overtime, folks. Three to two. And the numbers. 
The Oilers outshoot them 40 to 31. They outdo them on the faceoffs 40, 52% to 48. Two for four in the power play for Edmonton, two for five for the Kings. 40 hits for the Oilers, 47 for the Kings. The Oilers had 17 blocks. The Kings had 23. Eight giveaways for Edmonton, 12 for LA. Shots on goal. Oh, here we go. Sorry, guys. All right, 7-5 to five, LA in the first, 18-9 to nine, Edmonton in the second, 17-11 Edmonton in the third, and look at the overtime, 4 to nothing in the overtime. And that was it. That's what did them in. We'll talk about that in a sec. 40-31 total for the game. Scoring? Let me open the clip. I can't see it. Here we go. I have follow from Roy and Kopitar. At the 1927 mark of the first, that's a backbreaker. You know, you let in goals in the last minute. And look who wakes up, folks. Connor McDavid. He gets two power play goals, two beauties, two wrist shots, one on the right side, one on the left. You know, this guy is amazing. So he gets one uh, from Bouchard and Nugent Hopkins. And then from Bouchard and Dreisaitl about, uh, eh, about 100 seconds later. So all of a sudden, the Oilers, you know, the beast has awoken. McDavid's awake. You would think the Oilers are in good shape, but no, they shut out the rest of the game. Kempe from Arvidsson and Doughty, later in that period, on their own power play, make it 2-2. Two to two. No goals in the third. And there you see in the overtime, 3.24 in, they score on the power play. Trevor Moore from Velarde and Byfield. And I'll tell you what, the, the Ryan Nugent Hopkins boneheaded penalty is what cost the Oilers yesterday. That was a stupid penalty for no reason. I mean, he, he, he slashed the guy's stick. I forget who it was, stick he broke, I can't remember. But, you know, it's in plain view. And if you're going to crush the guy's stick and break it, you're going to get a penalty. I, I don't know what goes on in the heads of some of these players you know, the season's on the line. It was a boneheaded, stupid, dumb penalty for them to take. And, uh, in, and But in that, before that goal, if you guys haven't seen the replay, you might want to go check it out. In the replay, if you look, you'll see the puck flips up, and it looks like the Kings tap it down. I wouldn't say tap it down. That might be, but redirect the puck down with a high stick. They, were, they did a, a review on this and everything. Toronto will get everything wrong anyway. Toronto always get everything wrong. Go and, um, and I'm not trying to take away from the Kings win. They deserve to win this game. They deserve to win. But, you know, get the calls right. You know, I wasn't sure if they got that right. Really, I, I, and I, even I was a bit confused. So I think maybe that's the thing. There wasn't enough on it. And if you look at the replay, though, it looks like the puck was just redirected down with a high stick. And that's a high stick, folks. That's a high stick. They didn't call it. And even McDavid put up his hand right away and, call, and called it. He's seen it right away. So I don't know. You tell me what you think of that. I don't know. I, I thought that was a high stick myself. But then again, is it 100% conclusive? No. But, you know, does everything always have to be 100% conclusive or can we just draw on what we see with our eyes sometimes? You know, if you see a goalie with a puck and, and behind the goal line and he catches it, but the, but the goal line is where, you know, his, his, here's the goal line, his hand is here, and the puck's back in the trapper, come on, we know it went in, right? So, all right, done for this one, guys. I'm gonna get on this. The early bird wants me to go. It's time to go. And I got to get on. Uh, I got some other videos I got to make today. I got, um, I got a report on the Amherst. And I guess I'll see you guys in that one. Till then.